Let's talk about filtering features in QGIS. Uh, you might filter a layer to remove some of the features. Could be temporarily, could be so you can do some styling or analysis just based on the filtered features. And in this case, we are looking at, just as an example, we're looking at fire perimeter data from California. It's a small subset of the overall data set, just as an example. And if I open this up, you can see we have uh, some interesting fields like year. What year was the fire? We have the fire name. Um, we have things like the, um, the acres, how large it was that perimeter. And we might want to filter this down in a couple of different ways. Simplest way, place to start might be by the area. And um, the way we're going to do that today is you right click on the layer and come down to filter. And this query builder, it's kind of similar to other expression boxes that you might have seen in QGIS. It's a little bit simplified, so there's fewer features within here, um, which makes it a little bit more accessible. So since I want to filter based on the acres field, I'm going to select it, I'm going to double click it, and it will add it to the expression that I'm building. And I might sample this to get an idea of what the values of this field look like. And let's say I, um, I only want to see features where the acreage is over 200,000. I can type a greater than sign and then the number 200,000. And when I hit OK, you should see a lot fewer features. And they are the bigger features here. I'll usually double check and select a few of them with the Identify Features tool here. And in this panel, come down and look at the GIS acres field. See, yep, this is 300,000. So my filter worked fine. Now, that's a pretty simple filter. You might want to do something else, like combine this expression with um, other expressions so that uh, you can be even more specific. For example, if we come down here, um, actually let's loosen up the filter a little bit, make it 100,000, because I want some more features here. Um, I want to look at, say, the unit ID, which uh, stands for LA County here, LAC. I just want um, fire perimeters over 100,000 acres in LA County. You can do that with one filter expression. And I'm going to keep this open so that I can see it. Uh, the way you combine expressions, if you want to be more restrictive, you want both of the expressions to count, you can say the word and unit ID can double click on that. It's equal to, and I can actually select all of them, maybe filter it down to the one that I'm interested in, and I can double click this and it adds it to the expression. So now QGIS is going to say every feature that it keeps on the map in the GIS acres column has to be over 100,000, and also in addition to that, the unit ID column needs to be equal to LAC, exactly. And when I do that, you see that uh, very much restricted what's on the map, as expected. There's just, uh, looks like there's just this one. Uh, another common thing to want to do is say, I want to see all the fires for, let's say, LA County and Orange County, which is right nearby, ORC. My filter 
I might say unit ID equals uh, LAC. And uh, last time we used and because we wanted to restrict the expression more. But if we want to include more things in the expression, we can say or. So either of these things can be true, either the unit ID is LAC or the unit ID is ORC. And when I filter this, we should see, yep, all of the features are around LA County or Orange County. So that's the difference between AND and OR. Um, AND is going to be make things more specific, OR is going to open you up to more, um, more features to be included. And this can get pretty long when you're matching with specific text um, in a field. And for that reason, you might want to use in or not in. And the way this works is you say the field name in, and then in parentheses, a comma separated list of allowable values. So unit ID is in any of these values. When I hit OK, it should be exactly the same. Um, if I clear, I'm going to copy this and clear it because I want to see all of the features again. Maybe I want to also pick something up here. So this is VNC. If I filter, I can just add VNC here. Now I'm selecting for these three counties. And the difference between in and not in uh, probably makes sense. Uh, not in is going to do the inverse. So anything not in those three counties is now removed. Looking back at these operators, um, the six over here are direct comparisons between the, um, the value in the attribute table and the values that you're providing. So equals, less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal. When we were doing the acres, GIS acres, um, we had done something like this, greater than 100,000. If there was a feature where GIS acres was exactly 100,000, it would not be included here. You would want to do greater than or equal to, similar for less than or equal to. And uh, not equals is exclamation point equals. Uh, so if I replaced that with that, uh, I would only see features where GIS acres is not equal to 100,000, which is going to be all of them in this case. I don't believe any of these are exactly 100,000. So that's those six operators. We talked about in and not in for comparing to a list of values. We talked about and and or. And I'd like to talk about like and I like and the percent sign. Those are all used when comparing a text field to something that you want to match on, but you want to match in a fuzzy way. So I'm going to clear my current expression. Let's say um, uh, the biggest, the, the field that I think this might make sense for is the fire name or potentially the com comments. Let's do the comments. So this, this one says um, fire was caused by lightning. Maybe we could search the comments for any mention of lightning. I don't know how common that is in this data set, but we could check pretty quickly um, using a filter. We could say, not, not that, comments I like 
and I'll tell you why in a second. And in single quotes, we'll do percent sign, and between the percent signs, whatever we're searching for, lightning. So the field that we're comparing to, I like is the operator. And then in single quotes, your search text with percent signs on either side. And when I hit OK, uh, there are a few, not too many. If I click that, uh, you'll see late detection due to smoke from lightning fires. Lightning complex, lightning complex. Um, you'll notice that these are all uppercase, while the other one was all lowercase. And that is exactly what is going on with the letter I here. If I remove the letter I, it's no longer going to match the capitalized. Or it shouldn't match the capitalized ones. And it is. Okay, that's a surprise to me. So the reason that there are two of these, I like and like, I like should ignore capitalization. Sure seems like it's not though. Let's put some capitalization in there and see if it changes the filter. It doesn't, it looks like like might be broken. So never mind. Uh, but I, for consistency's sake, I would stick with I like if you're comparing to um, comparing the text and you don't care about capitalization. If you do care about capitalization, then stick with like, although it seems a little bit broken. And um, the percent sign, which we're using here, is really, um, it's a wild card. It matches any text. So um, this is saying the way we have it written right now, lightning just has to be anywhere in the field. If I removed that first percent sign, it would mean that the text comments needs to start with lightning, but can be followed by anything else. If I didn't have the percent sign at the end, that means the text has to end with lightning. There are reasons why you might want that, but if you're just doing a search through some comments, uh, using a percent sign on both sides is totally fine. Um, you can also do, you can have as many of these as you want. It doesn't have to be just those two, uh, but it gets pretty complicated. I would usually stick with those two around, um, around the thing that you're searching for.